Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I will be reacting to Death Bell's newest video and season finale 2 for season 4. Sethrath vs. Virgil. God, I feel like my brother's gonna walk in. Oh, um, yes, this time I am home. I'm calling this dude Home Alone. <coughs> Because my parents are home, but I have to watch my little brother, so if I do trim something out of this video, plus I am going to try something new. Instead of using my speakers, I will be using my neck beats, and yeah, you can't hear no audio through it, but I'll put the audio in and all that stuff, so I'm going to try that. If they don't work out as planned, then I'll do it the normal, well, the normal way of how I used to do it, but if this works, I'm going to be doing this from now on. But anyways, yeah, Sethroth versus Virgil. I seriously got no idea who either of these two characters are. Well, Virgil, I don't know, but Sethroth. Animation Rewind did use Sethroth before. In one of his car um, in one of his CFCs. Which I can't remember. I probably put the thumbnail or something with the or text something. I, I don't think I remember the name of it. So, hey, I see that. But yeah, I will be signing with Sephiroth because I do know some things in love with Animation Rewind. And I really don't want to say Sephiroth will win because I don't know Virgil too well. But all I know is that he is the brother of Dante. So that's all I know for my thing. But without further ado, let's get on with this video right now. The great philosopher Plato once said, The measure of a man is what he does with power. But to these guys, power is the measure of a man. Sephiroth, Especially that the fearsome sword. one winged angel of Final Fantasy. And Virgil, the half demon son of Sparta from Devil May Cry. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to Dim find combos. out who would win a death battle. At least they do not have into it. Through the millennia, legends were passed of a source of unlimited energy, the Promised Land. Unfortunately, all hope of finding this sacred ground had been lost, until the Shinra Electric Power Company excavated the remains of a being believed to hail from the very land they saw. Wait, Power Company? They called this weird naked purple lady Genova and thought that if they could bring her back to life, she could help them find the Promised Land. But apparently, they just didn't have any phoenix down. If they couldn't resurrect a being who could lead them to the promised land, Shinra decided they would simply create their own. After many experiments infusing Genova's cells with those of a human's, they finally found their savior. His name was Sephiroth. Their name actually sounds badass. With hair like that, it's no wonder he was <coughs> created in a lab. Look at how majestic that mane is. According to Final Fantasy lore, Sephiroth has to use an entire bottle of shampoo and conditioner every single time he bathes. Why do you know that? Why do you Did know you that? join his fan club or something? Uh, for research. Uh, but Shinra oh, yeah, wasn't like interested in Sephiroth for his hair. Research, Instead, he was, was an essential part of their soldier program. Wait, wait. This electric company has their own private military? I'd hate to miss a payment with those guys. Especially if they sent Seth after me. I mean, like, oh, yeah, the ridiculously got long oh, yeah, sword yeah, it keeps with him. That's just Masamune. And I see, like, all these this people seven lying foot behind two behemoth him. behemoth of a blade is a lot like the Nodachi swords they used back in feudal Japan. But instead of wielding something long with two hands like those, Sephiroth only needs one. Even that speaks nothing of his effectiveness as a warrior. Yeah, you know when people spread legends of someone, they usually make him out to be even better than he really is? It's the total opposite with Sephiroth. With his superhuman speed, strength, and durability, That's Sephiroth was instrumental characters. in ensuring Shinra's victory in the Wutai War, conquering the last free nation on the planet. He returned home a legend. 
But all those warm, fuzzy feelings of victory didn't last long. While if on a mission to the town of Sam, Nibelheim, Sephiroth found cool. a bunch of books on the Genova Every time I Project. Make his hair go That's when he discovered he was a secret science project the whole time. <gasps> the what truth twist. crushed Sephiroth and drove him mad. In a rage, he annihilated Nibelheim, but was stopped by a mercenary named Cloud Strife. Sephiroth oh. was impaled by the Buster Sword and fell to his death. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Which is what I would have said if Sephiroth hadn't dropped into a hole in the ground that led him to the giant window screensaver <laughs> called the Life Stream. The Life Stream is a buried river of energy which basically maintains life across the planet. Normally, merging with the life stream is the equivalent of entering the afterlife, but not for Sephiroth. Mm. And this is where things get weird, so buckle up! Still conscious, Sephiroth's right, essence seatbelt. floated through the life stream for years until he absorbed enough energy to rebuild his body. With the energy of the life stream, he could control other beings with Genova cells, including oh. the corpse of Genova, who he manipulated like a puppet and disguised as himself. Oh, what the hell? That's his mom? Who would do that to their own mom? I mean, I know she's a genocidal alien monster, but come on! Probably makes a good breakfast. But yeah. Sephiroth's descent into the life stream offered him even more. Bacon. It transformed him from a mere super soldier into the most dangerous being on the planet. He's strong enough to throw a man hundreds of feet skyward, move at supersonic speeds, and withstand brutal stab wounds through vital organs. Hmm. He's got illusion powers that can trick people by creating an entirely fake scenario. He can lift people with his mind, including himself, and then he can just fly! That's how it works. Whee! Additionally, Sephiroth can cast magic thanks to his on-hand materia. Materia is crystallized life energy which grants different powers according to the type of material used. Yeah. This lets Sephi attack with fire, lightning, ice, and earth-based magic. He can block attacks with barrier and reflect, and heal himself with cure and regen. And ever since jumping into the life stream, he's had unlimited access to his magical power. Oh. With his new godlike abilities, Sephiroth began a plan to stop mankind from drying up the planet's life force. That doesn't sound so scary. Does that mean he's an environmentalist or...? But to do this, he decided to use black materia to summon a giant meteor to destroy the planet and absorb all of its life energy for himself. So like, an opposite environmentalist. A planet vampire. I mean, we're talking about a guy who kicked a dude through solid concrete, murdered the crap out of a 30-foot serpent with a spike through the face, Damn. and kicked a dragon's flamethrower attack without even getting a teensy bit hurt. A particularly impressive feat considering this attack was capable of one-shotting fellow soldier Zack Fair. Uh, Wiz, you may need to up your prescription, because that's definitely Cloud. No, 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 Cloud was just recalling false memories there. It was really Zack. However, it was Cloud who impaled Sephiroth pre-livestream with the Buster Sword. What? Holy God, is it huge! It's like two feet wide! You'd think a stab from that thing would just cut him in half. Pretty so much. just kind of shook it off. And in his rematch with Cloud, he blocked an attack strong enough to crater the metal around him. Considering the diameter of the crater, the surface area of Sephiroth's feet, and assuming the most likely steel composition, I estimate this attack to equal nearly 1,600 tons of force. Sephiroth can use that wicked sword to stab and lift wannabe heroes by their ribcage, slice through skyscrapers, and shoot energy beams that can shred these huge Mako cannons. And from the life stream, Sevi figured out he could create new bodies or even take on other forms. Wait, what? These forms greatly resemble certain creatures found in Christian and Jewish mythology. He certainly looks the part when he goes into his ultimate form. Regardless, Sephiroth does possess a single black wing, a blatant symbol of his fall from grace. So basically. So I have a question. If he does have that one wing, wouldn't that mean he'll be. Like either flapping a circle or, or something else besides flying, because what? Because I think in real life no one, can, no one can fly with one wing. No birds, no planes, no nothing can fly with one wing. Oh wait, this is video game and fiction logic, so. Hmm. Final Fantasy does everything it can to not be subtle. Just like Sephiroth's most devastating attack, Supernova, which decimates an entire solar system. Wait, if Zeph is that powerful, how does anyone ever beat him? Don't get the wrong idea here. There's a lot of debate over how Supernova actually works, but I think it's pretty clear that Sephiroth isn't creating the explosion himself. Rather, he's transporting his foes to a specific point in time within an alternate explosion. 
Dimension. Careful, Wiz, don't sell him short. Just look at it. When he uses the attack, reality literally crumbles away like glass. This Ooh. is identical to the animation for certain summoned creatures. According to the official Crisis Core Complete Guide, summons draw their targets into their own space in order to attack. And this is no different. In the Dissidia fighting games, Sephiroth goes for the simple approach and opens a dimensional hole to the explosion. The attack is even described as sending destruction even into other dimensions. And if he could summon planet-busting meteors at will, why did he go through so much trouble to get the Black Materia, which literally summons meteors? That would explain why the supernova doesn't hurt him. He's not really there, just using those illusion powers of his. With all these powers, oh. I can't believe Cloud and friends were able to take him down. He's not invincible, but he's damn powerful. Ever persistent, Sephiroth departed with a final chilling promise. I will. You can like, stab someone right from a freaking so deep range. Why does like, he sound so bored? Maybe he is boomstick. Two thousand like, oh, yeah, years ago, ago a great mutiny Good transpired in the underworld. Man, the the demon warrior Sparta rebelled against his evil master, Mundus. To protect the world, Sparta did his best to seal the connection between Hell and Earth. But then Sparta got lonely. Or maybe it was just a sausage fest in there. Either way, he snuck out of hell long enough to knock up this chick named Eva. And she popped out a couple of awesome demon slayers. Nice choice. Yeah. You may remember the younger of the two, Dante. Oh yeah, he fought that witch chick with the hair. But the eldest Boy. and potentially deadliest brother was the one and only Virgil. Virgil and Dante were rivals from birth. Dante yeah. was a goofball, Virgil was serious, Dante hated his being a demon, and Virgil loved it. It's that classic odd couple scenario. Oh but then God. one Hate fateful them. day, in an act of vengeance against the late Sparta, a group of rogue demons separated the two brothers and killed their mother. Virgil was believed to be dead. But in reality, Virgil survived and set out on his own path to seek his father's immense power for himself. And he's 100% equipped to be a butt <laughs> How this kid's slayer how just this like kid his pops. As a half demon, Virgil can jump several times his own height, move at supersonic speeds, and heal himself quickly, kind of like that Wolverine guy. He can tough out getting stabbed through the lungs, intestines, the heart, Stab through the heart. Sure most people need. Not if my experiment has anything to say about it. You say something, Wiz? I said not if Virgil's... Uh Freaking ads come out of nowhere. I hate that. Now, is it Moose? Do you have anything to say about it? Well, sadly, for any human, <laughs> I, I, demon I, I, human demon who gets in his way, Virgil also happens to carry some extra deadly weapons on hand, including a spiffy katana called Tomato. Yamato. Eh, it's said that this sword can <laughs> cut through anything, even dimensions, and probably tomatoes. Actually, Yamato is the exact thing Sparta used to seal hell from Earth in the first place. Virgil's sword fighting prowess draws from his Dark Slayer fighting style, which emphasizes teleportation, lightning quick movements, and even quicker slashes straight from the sheath. This technique is directly influenced by Ei Jutsu, the real-life Japanese art of the quick draw. And thanks to Virgil's demonic powers, he can attack so hmm. fast the blade seems invisible. Yeah, the only thing better than fighting with one sword is fighting with eight! With Virgil's ghostly okay, summon what? swords, he can turn himself into a living Beyblade. Fire them like a machine Bay, Bay, gun, Bay, Bay, or ready? make it rain! Blades make it rain! Bread and butter, but if he needs to focus Bay, on Bay, Bay, strength, Bay, Bay, he switches Bay, to Beowulf. He can charge up blink of an eye punches and kicks that hit like a cement truck made of lead and KO some of the toughest demons in just a few hits. And hey, sure you can. Dig Street Fighter. There's one more trick up Virgil's sleeve. Thanks to his demon blood, he can access a form known as Devil Trigger. And this mode amplifies everything. His strength, speed, and he means all get everything. Boost, making him several times deadlier than before. Plus, he just looks badass. In his quest to become as powerful as his father, he Virgil's ability is skyrocketed. He's taken down dozens of demons in the blink of an eye, and escaped an illusion from the Sorcerer Arkham, which makes normal people go crazy. 
But if anything's gonna show off what a son of Sparta can really do, it's pitting him against his bro. Sure, Virgil can easily avoid Dante's bullets, but why dodge them when you can spin your sword, line them all up, and fire them back? Like a boss. In okay, that should be your cockiness right there. 12 foot diameter open space in a heavy rainstorm with nothing but their sword swings. On average, storms can fill a cubic foot space with as many as 30 raindrops. So, Virgil and Dante must have destroyed 108,000 raindrops in less than a second. If Virgil can swing his sword that fast, I bet he'd be the in um, or Dante me the daily, or giving haircuts, or doing that thing where he chops bad guys to pieces so fast they don't even realize they're dead yet. Like when he fought Beowulf, the monster yeah, you are. the weapon. And then he punched him so oh. hard, he flew 55 feet up and hit the ceiling. When comparing Beowulf's size to Virgil, he appears to be as large as an elephant. Given what's available, this seems like our best measure of Virgil's strength, but there is one issue. The Devil May Cry series makes frequent use of slow motion to depict the absurdity of these characters, and this could be a similar yeah. case. So let's look at another slow mo feat, the Rainstorm Fight. At one point, the rain freezes in place for about two and a half seconds, as Virgil and Dante keep moving indicating a 14,500% speed increase in real time. Applying the same degree to the Beowulf punch gives us an acceleration speed of about 4,882 feet per second. With that in mind, we can apply our previous data to deduce the maximum height sand ceiling and determine Virgil's striking strength to be nearly 720 million newtons of force. That's a lot! It matches Virgil's incredible touch. A lot, too. only 50 We already mentioned his tough. super healing factor, but it's even more overpowered than you think. Virgil once got completely cut in half, but healed so fast that it's impossible to even notice. And his regeneration ability really? can be worn down. Yeah, that's how this weird jester guy beat him. But it takes a lot oh. to pull off. And Virgil Ranger. can always just use Naruto to hop through dimensions to get away if he wants. Sadly, Virgil never got to rule the demon realm like he wanted. Instead, the demon King Mundus permanently transformed Virgil into his puppet, irreversibly manipulating his mind in the process. And then Dante wow. kind of, uh, exploded. Yes! But one or two losses against someone who's basically no. goddamn Satan hardly makes him a weakling. Hell and Earth trembles before the power of Virgil. It'll be fun to fight with the Prince of Darkness. If my father did it, I should be able to do it too. Nice. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this Where debate once and for all. But before we get to the bloody slicing and dicing, pick up some Blue Apron and slice and dice in your kitchen. Blue Apron Time to death death battle. Battle. Wait, so that blood just comes out of nowhere. Powerful. I can see it. Who are you? Your despair. This shit fight, just like the minute they see each other, they gotta fight. Good boy, that sword. Why does this remind me of something? Bit of Dragon Ball Z. Okay, you're strong. But are you fast enough? No. Maybe. Don't move. Damn. I suppose it can't be helped. Wait, how do you get that little boy in his head? Oh. They're fake. Stop wasting my time. Boy. Okay, now that looks badass right there. This animation and his. Yeah. 
Oh my god. Demonic Beyblade. the fabric of our dimension, so I cast an illusion to disguise this witness oblivion. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh my god! Bad ass! Oh, that didn't kill him. I'm free. Uh, no you're not. Extremely powerful swordsman, but Sephiroth's cunning and stronger abilities led to his victory. Wait a minute, I thought the lore said Virgil's sword could cut through anything. Why didn't it cut through Sephiroth's sword? Yamato was a unique weapon, but its legend clearly exaggerated. On multiple occasions, it's clashed with Dante's blade and even a common rocket launcher without cutting through either, and sometimes. Actually, game mechanic, actually. Because, okay, yes, of course, it says I can't cut through anything. What was it with Samurai? Um, Silver Samurai. His sword says that he can cut through anything, but it, I think it cannot cut through adamantium. And it was in some, in some, actually, not some, but in some fiction games, oh, anything, really, in fiction, they exaggerate, okay, because they do exaggerate, they can cut through anything. But it's up to the user of how, you know, you know what I'm saying, people. It's up to the user if they want to cut through or don't or not cut through that thing. Say I want to cut through, gotta screen it now. I need a sword that can cut through the fourth wall and yeah, all that stuff. Requires an exuberant amount of force to cut through tougher material. But let's discuss the real facts. Like strength. So Virgil with Beowulf could do 720 million newtons, right? But there aren't a lot of good Sephi strength feats to compare. First, let's compare Sephiroth to a fellow first-class member of the soldier fighting force, who had also been experimented on with Genova cells, Zack Fair. Remember him? He's the Not Cloud guy who fought that dragon. <laughs> At his peak, Zack could cut through a large metal door. He's a Not Cloud guy, boy. Seemingly with most of his strength. Show Zack some love, people. Given the size people. and width of the door, this feat's sheer strength comes out to 980 million newtons. And Seth was way stronger than Zack. In fact, if we look at their strength stats when they fought that dragon, Sephiroth was three and a half times stronger than Wait, Zach. when they fought but the dragon or any time or just newtons. naturally That's stronger? That's almost as much force as 30 Hiroshima bombs. Strength isn't everything, though. Virgil was technically faster than Sephi, but Sephiroth has handled people of similar speeds before. Plus, Sephiroth could survive plenty of hits. Plus, what about the um, devil, the double the trigger of multiplier, factor was which would make him faster than Sephiroth? Limits. In contrast, God damn it, that's well. God damn it. By his pool of magic, which was unlimited. Well, he also had to take some time to cast each healing spell, but that's why he distracted Virgil with his illusions. We know Virgil was susceptible to illusionary and mental attacks, as it's happened to him multiple times and even led to his in-canon demise. And Sephiroth's In illusions could hide his ultimate technique. Yeah, Virgil's healing was pretty awesome, but it was never gonna hold up under an exploding sun to the face. Virgil put up a good fight, but he couldn't match Sephiroth's superior strength, magic, and techniques. Looks like this devil's cried for the last time. The winner is Sephiroth. Hey, I'm Chad, I play Boomstick. Ben, I play Wiz. If you want to get the fight music for this episode of Death Battle, just click the link in the description and you can pick it up on iTunes. You can get music from Thor vs. Wonder Woman, Naruto vs. Zichko, a bunch of Death Battles. And if you want exclusive commentary on this episode, then click that box right over there in the corner. Thank you so much for joining us for Death Battle Season 4. We're excited to show you some awesome episodes next year in Season 5. Season 5, who will fight? <gasps> no, it can't be. It can't be. Season 5 versus February the 5th, 2018. Ah! <laughs> yeah, but in all seriousness, 
I'm wondering who is next fighter because that could be actually anybody. But it, but they need to bring back more characters. Like even though some that are like if it was way too easy easy or too obvious, I feel like they should come back. Or in other words, like any cool characters, they should come back. For example, Shadow came back, Thor came back, Wonder Woman came back. Well, technically, those two fight each other. Um, who else? I want to say technically Charizard came back, but that was a part of Red. Well, in technically, I want to say Charizard came back. They really, really, they really, 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 really need to. Okay, the. Pre-analysis, that was great, but the post-analysis for the explanation of why uh, Virgil wins, I call BS on that. Because they didn't mention nothing about the Devil Trigger, which, uh, uh, let's see, can multiply the user, like, what? Uh, let's just say three times. Wouldn't that mean he'll be, like, 1,800 times the speed of sound or something, or 18 miles per hour or something like that? Ow! Just that. Which wouldn't that be technically times three? But I know it's technically a um is is not okay. It's not permanent a permanent transformation. It's um what's the one look for limited transformation. Which and again, if it's a several time multiplier, whatever they said, it was one that means Virgil will win. But whatever, that's that's well. That's the goal for you. But yep, I am excited. I am happy. Animation was great. It's set. No, actually, nothing really. I got nothing. But, anyways, let's. Alright, let's. Let me. Alright, if you like this video, call. <laughs> Please punch the like button. Phone, computer, tablet. Whatever you to watch this video, Falcon punch the like button. Comment down below what do you want me to react to, and I will do it. I will goddamn do it whenever I get the chance. And also, plus, follow my page. I'm oh, not page. Follow my Discord too. If you do want to talk to me, um, yeah, talk to me, talk to other people, chill out, stuff like that. And you can also talk to me directly of and ask me questions too. But yes, guys, without further ado, let's end this video right now. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.